All right, so uh, in our last uh, tutorial series, uh, we have modeled uh, this entire uh, beam to column subassembly and we have uh, modeled uh, these uh, bolts and we conducted a very typical loading scenario where we applied like some load at the end of the beam and pretty much uh, we have created a single step as part of our analysis which what we called a loading step so the focus of this video is basically how to apply a bolt pretension load uh, as part of a static uh, general uh, analysis so this is what we are going to go through today we are going to add a pretension force in our four bolts and actually the way we apply uh, pretension force in uh, bolts it became easier with the latest uh, versions of uh, Abacus, I believe like starting from 2019 or 2018, uh, there have become like uh, additional option in Abacus that made this um, a much easier thing to do. So let's go through this. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the step module right now, as I have here. And the first thing that I want to do, I want to create a new step. We'll call it pretension step. And this step will be the pen after the initial step. So this is, will be pretty much our first step. And then this is where we are going to apply our pretension load in the bolts. And then following that, we are going to apply our typical uh, loading in our subassembly. So let's go ahead and create that. So I click on create. I will call this bolt or maybe just pre-tensioning. -ten, uh, so that's it, I'll just call it pre-tensioning. And uh, right now, uh, Avex is asking me where to add this step, so I will add it after the initial, so before the loading step. And this is, again, this is a static general as well. So I'll click on continue. At the time period, again, I will have it as one. Nonlinear geometry, well, this really doesn't matter here since this is just for applying a preload. So turning on the nonlinear geometry doesn't really matter. But in any case, I always like to add this uh, or click on that to make it on always. So the description, I can add a description. Adding a pre-tension force to the bolt. Okay, so this is just a small description that will help me later on if I forget what was uh, this step doing. And then let me do the same thing that we did in the, our tutorial series. I will just put uh, like some values here. Let's say this is for the time increments and the maximum time increments and so on. All right, everything looks fine. I'll click OK. So now I have my step over here. All right. So I will dismiss this now. So I will leave the step and then I will go to the part module. So if you go back to the part module and then I will go to the bolt and what I'm going to do, I'm going to define a new surface. I'm going to define a new surface. So under bolt over here, if you expand this from the model tree, so we are going to define a new surface. This surface will be a surface at the middle of the bolt or at the middle of the shank of the bolt so but in order to define a surface here across the cross section of the bolt we need to actually partition the bolt in the middle and we didn't do that in our previous uh, tutorial so let's create a partition here in the middle so by now you already know how to do that so we can click here on the partition cell using uh, by defining a cutting plane let me click on that let me click on select all the cells of the shank click done yes i was telling me that any mesh that you had will be deleted that's fine let me select three points so i'll select three points along the shank diameter so here these are the vertices at the middle that's fine Ah, oh, we need another one, just select it too. All right, here it is. So create partition, that's it, done. So now I have my partition at the mid length of the bolt. So now let me create a surface. I'll double click on this. By the way, the surface can be created 
anywhere in the assembly level or at the part level but it's always better to create things in the part level and then they will be populated automatically in all the instances that you have in the assembly level so i'll clear this i will call it surf bolt shank i'll say continue and then uh, abex is waiting for me to select uh, these uh, parts as you see here i cannot select the inner uh, surface i only I'm, I'm able only to select the exterior one but that's fine we can select the in inside uh, geometry by uh, there are many ways of doing that so if you go here at the top at this icon over here so right now this icon over here it says uh, select from exterior entities if you click left click and hold on that you can select the one next to it uh, right here that says select from interior entities so if i click on this one and then I go back, then now I'm able to select the interior faces of my bolts. So now let me select these four sides as I'm doing right now, and then I click on done. So now I'm selecting, of course, a face. So the face has, uh, or this surface has two, or this surface has two faces. There is a face in this direction that has a brown color and if I rotate here there is another face on the other direction that has a, a purple or magenta color so I'm interested in the exterior face that is the brown one so I'm going to select from here this is the brown one so I click on that that's it so now I have my surface it has been defined over here all right uh, and actually if you scroll here to the assembly level you will see under surfaces that you have six surfaces have been defined and those you see right now it already uh, abacus already generated four different surfaces for all four uh, instances of the bolt so that's why i like always to define things on the part level but anyway we don't need all these four surfaces anyway uh, as you will see in a second this became much better in later versions of abacus how to apply the bolt load okay so now we're done so the only thing that we need to do now is to actually apply the pretension load so let's go to load ah so i have a problem here uh, because uh, when we added the bolt previously we did the constraint coaxial constraint but this coaxial constraint was uh, ruined after we did this partition in the middle so we just need to uh, move the bolt again to its uh, proper location so that's why it uh, typically it's not ideal to do that because like this position constraint because this can create these kind of problems but let me move it anyway so I'll move this bolt done and uh, let me remove it here from from this point to this point okay done all right so that's it that was not a big deal but this is something to keep in mind like try not to put uh, any uh, of these like from this icon like creating constraint this can cause problems when you change something in the model so try to just keep the regular moving and rotation controls when you are positioning your assembly all right so let's move on okay so now let me go back to load and now let me create a load and this one I will call it just bolt load and this will be applied in the pre-tensioning step so now I have the the initial the pre-tensioning and the load step so I'm going to apply this in the pre-tensioning step and I'm going to uh, scroll downward here and select bolt load so I'll click on continue and then Abacus is asking me, select a method. Are you selecting an interior surface or a bolt shank surface? So we are not selecting the bolt shank exterior surface. We want to select the interior surface of the shank, which is what we defined earlier. So I'm going to select interior surface. And then uh, Abacus is expecting me to select this surface from the viewport, but I don't need to do that because we already defined this surface previously. 
So I'm going to select surfaces from here. And then I'm going to select the first. Uh, I have, of course, all these four surfaces that has been created for all the instances. I'm just going to select the f this one. So this is the one for the main bolt that we added here at the top corner. It doesn't matter which one, by the way, that you uh, select just for one of these bolts would be fine. And then we'll see how will this whatever this load will be applied to the other bolts. So I will just select this one and I'm going to go say continue. So right now you see now you have uh, this dialog box and now you have this indication that shows these arrows over here indicating a force in the bolt. So right now you have this dialog box and you have here uh, something that says the method and the method now it says apply force or adjust length. Okay, so you can apply this pretension force by multiple methods. Uh, one method is to actually apply a force on the bolt uh, shank or you can modify the length. So pretty much you are applying a contraction to the shank length, which would be equivalent to this force. So either methods uh, would work. You can do well, any one of those. But of course, the simpler in our case here, just to apply uh, direct force. What is the magnitude? There are no signs here. Just uh, uh, for the pretension, just apply your typical sign. So I'm going to use uh, in my case, maybe 50 kilonewton, and since I'm using newton and millimeter as units, so that would be 50 thousand. Amplitude, ramp, so this means that this force is going to be applied, as we mentioned previously, as a ramp, uh, like incrementally, until it reaches 50 thousand during the pretensioning uh, step time. So this is the default one that says ramp. I actually can choose the one that I defined before that calls ramp amplitude. I always like to, to do my own amplitudes as we mentioned uh, in the previous uh, tutorial video. And then here the bolt axis, surface normal. Yes, so you can apply this uh, on a different uh, axis, uh, like not perpendicular to the axis of the shaft. But of course ours in this case, this is the typical case, so we want to do that. Now, the nice thing about the new Abacus versions is that you have this tick box over here. So this is what makes things now much easier. So this one, it says, if you check it, this says that the pretension section would be applied at the part level. This means that whatever that we defined here, like this force, this will be applied at the part level. And at the part level, we only drew one bolt right so if this is applied to the part level then this means that at the assembly level where we have four bolts or maybe even more bolts that this force will be automatically applied to all the other bolts so with this simple click now everything becomes much easier because whatever we applied here is will automatically be applied to the all other uh, three bolts and if i click on ok so now you see, now I have this indication of the port preload in all of my four bolts, like if I rotate here as well, so it's in all four bolts. So that's it. Now that's it, we have finished uh, actually the application of the port uh, preload uh, for static analysis. In other types of analysis, there are many ways of adding a uh, bolt load, like this option of adding a bolt load from the load module is not available if you are doing explicit analysis, for instance, or dynamic analysis using an explicit solver. So in that case, you can do a different way of applying load by using like temperature gradient. So this is some kind of equivalency to add some bolt load. But this is something that we are going to discuss in later videos. So there are a couple of things that we need to do yet. So let me select here the load manager just to check things. So in the load manager, the bolt load, here it is, and this will be created, or this will be applied during the pretensioning, right? And then this will be propagated during the loading step, all right? So we are doing the pretensioning here, and then this will be propagated, it will move forward to the next step. But there is something here. We need to edit what's happening here in the loading step. Because if you preload the bolt, if you put on the bolt like some kind of force, like as we did 50 kilonewton, during the actual loading step, 
what will happen? Do you want this 50 kilonewton to remain constant? Well, if that's the case, this will be wrong because this means that the bolt force will not relax. It will stay always 50 kilonewton. But you don't want that. So you want to modify something here in the loading step. So if I select this and I click on edit, so now I'm back here, I'm showing the indication. So what I need to do at this loading step, the method, I shouldn't use apply force. I should modify this and say fix at current length. So this is what you should do, okay? So fix at current length, all right? So this means that whatever that will happen, like if I pull my beam, like if these bolts are experiencing like tensile strains or whatever, the bolt force will change, like it will start at 50 kN and then it will start increasing or decreasing or whatever, so it will change, all right? So this is what you need to do, fix at current length, and then we can just say OK. So that's it. So now it says modified over here. That's it. This concludes it totally how you do a bolt load in Abacus. Uh, other things that you can check as well, like for the boundary conditions, if you want to see here, for the boundary conditions, again, the beam displacement, nothing happening at the beam edge until the loading step. And nothing is happening for the column fixed base the fixed base it starts in the initial step so this is the column base and it stays in all the other steps so everything seems fine everything seems good so i can go ahead uh, to my uh, job but i think before that i need to modify the mesh because we created i need to modify the mesh in the bolt because if you remember we did this partition so now i have to remesh so i'll just remesh the part Okay, it looks fine, no problem. So I'll go back to my job and then I will submit my uh, job and let me uh, perhaps create a new job. I'll call this job monotonic with pretension. I'm going to say continue. Everything I will keep the same, perhaps for parallelization, I will use like multiple processor to make things faster. I'm going to say okay, and I'm going to submit my job. Uh, so here, by the way, Abacus is telling me, uh, just be aware that the field output is not requested in the following step. So if you remember, we defined the field output before and the history output for the actual loading step. But right now in this new step that we created, we didn't define any field output or history output. So let's click no, don't go to the submission and actually let's modify this. So in the field output, let me modify this field output. I'll select it and click edit. And uh, so this is right now in the loading step. That's fine. This is the one that we defined before. So I need to create a new field output. We can call it, well, it's better to give it a better name. So field output pretension, perhaps. And this will be for the pretensioning step. Continue. And what do we would like to see? Well, let's save everything for the whole model. Uh, every n increment, that's fine. I want to see stresses because maybe I want to see what will happen in the bolt. I want to see displacements. And maybe I would like to see strains as well. And maybe plastic strain. So let's keep those. That would be fine. And then I click OK. Uh, history output, I don't need a history output for now, that's fine, no need for a history output. So let's go ahead to the job again and let's submit it. So history output, yes, it says history output is not requested, that's all right, no problem. So the job has been submitted, let's uh, click on the monitor to check what's going on. So right now, by the way, this is similar to our previous video when we uh, talked about how to monitor the job submission and everything so right now the difference is that the total time will actually now go from zero to two because we have from zero to one this is for the first step and then from one to two this is for the second step which is the loading step and over here the step will start at one which would be the application of the pretensioning which for the sake of what we are doing today we just want to see what will happen in the first step and then check the results uh, 
of the pretensioning. Alright, so we see here that uh, this is what we typically observe. So we have here, we are, Abacus is using the actually the maximum step increment because in uh, this is what we typically observe. There is no problem when it comes to conversions when you apply the pretension load. If you are getting problems with conversions, this means that there is a problem with your mesh. Alright, so that's why in our case we have a very good mesh for the bolt and the surrounding uh, parts so we don't have any problem and then we abacus is using the maximum time increment and now i finished in 10 increments i finished my entire uh, pre-loading or pre-tensioning uh, step all right and right now uh, abacus will start in step two it will go now to step two so now we'll see step two and we'll see that the total time will start being like one point something and so on. And the step time will start again from zero because this is the new step, which is the loading step. But I don't need to wait for that. Actually, I will just keep the analysis running. I don't need to wait for the other step, but I can actually go now to the results and check how my preload has been applied. So let's check that. Let me dismiss this window or maybe just minimize it and then let me go to the results so I have my results if I go click here on the deformed shape so right now in the deformed shape right now we are in the pretensioning as you see here we are in the pretensioning uh, if I select from here this is the pretensioning step and the pretensioning step is 10 increments and the only thing that you you see here is only the bolts nothing has been uh, stressed other than the bolts and the surrounding plate area so if we want to see this much better let me actually uh, create a section cut from here the section cut manager in the x plane yeah so this is at 50 millimeters so this is at the center line of my end plate so this is good now let me look from the xy plane the front view and let me zoom in a little bit let me put this frame selector over here and let me drop this a little bit to the side so now we can see if i go to zero so this is the pretensioning this is what happens so i can move frame by frame so first it was zero then it was applied as we mentioned like using the ramp monotonically until we reach the end which is the 50 kilonewton and the 50 kilonewton seems here based on what we are seeing this is uh, about uh, so this is a yellowish color so this is about uh, 300 or maybe uh, 250 megapascal for this bolt so maybe it's not a very large amount of pretensioning actually but anyway you get the idea so that's it so now you can see that the pretensioning load uh, worked and everything looks fine all right and then of course now as you see as abacus is uh, going into the second so now abacus is going to the next step so now we are going into the loading step and that's why my results here are being updated so now the beam is started to deform and now we are going to get our typical uh, analysis being concluded all right so this concludes our uh, tutorial on how to apply bolt loads in uh, in other videos like uh, coming soon we are going to see how to apply loads for explicit solvers like using temperature gradient and there are even more uh, better ideas actually to uh, or like more options that you can do to apply bolts for any kind of analysis that you are conducting as we are going to see in later videos. All right, so see you.